Good day, we will discuss the normal distribution. Normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution that describes data that clusters around a mean. Six properties of the normal distribution. First, the curve of the distribution is a bell shape. So it looks like this. Number two, the curve is symmetrical about the mean, meaning the mean is at the center and it serves as a mirror. So if you notice, the left side is equal to the right side and the mean is at the center which serves as the mirror. Number three, the mean, median, and mode are of equal values and when sketched, they coincide at the center of the graph. So it also includes the mode. Mean, median, mode are the uh, three measures of central tendency. Number four, the width of the curve is determined by the standard deviation of the distribution. So the mean is at the center, which is this, our notation for the population mean. And the standard deviation will serve as the width. So here we have to the right, we have the one standard deviation to the right from the mean. And this one is two standard deviation from the mean. And this is three standard deviation from the mean. Also to the left side, because the curve is symmetrical. So we have this the uh, one standard deviation from the mean second standard or two standard deviation from the mean and three standard deviation from the mean the standard normal distribution also called the z distribution is a special normal distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one when we talk about the normal distribution the mean and the standard deviation always depends on its mean. I mean, always depends on the data. So we have this in general, the mean and the standard deviation. But when we talk about a standard normal distribution, it is fixed. The mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So if we draw this one, so here, if you notice, the mean is now zero. So from here, all the mean will become zero and the standard deviation is one. So this will become zero plus one, zero plus two, then we have zero plus three because the standard deviation is one. So meaning we have one, two, three, and so on to the right. And to the left, we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. So this is the standard normal distribution. And if it is a, just a normal distribution, so we have this. So it depends on the data, any mean. So for instance, in a given distribution with mean equals 95 and standard deviation equals 3, the width of the curve will be three numbers away from each other, which is determined from the given standard deviation. So the mean is given by 95. So plus 3, we have 98. Plus 3, we have 101. And another plus 3, we have 104. Then to the left of the mean, we'll just do the subtraction. 95 minus 3 is 92. Minus 3 is 89. Minus 3 is 86. 5. The curve extends indefinitely approaching the x-axis but never touching it. Thus, the curve is asymptotic to the x-axis. So this, in this area, from the right, to right or left area, we have this. Uh, they are asymptotic. They do not touch. The curve only approaches this x-axis but never touches the x-axis. And last property, the area of the region under the curve is 1. It represents the probability or percentage. 
So if we talk about percentage, we can have that one as 100%. So 1 is the 100%. Or proportion associated with a specific sets of measurement values. This is because this is all about probability. We're talking about probability and we know that probability, the maximum probability is 1. So probability is just from 0 to 1. So the whole area under the curve is 1. And if that is the case, if we divide this by 2 from the center or from the mean, it means that one side of the curve has 0.5, a probability of 0.5 or 50%. The other one is also 0.5 or 50%. Note, any normal distribution can be converted into the standard normal distribution by turning the individual values into z-scores. We usually do this for us to interpret a given data based on the original data. We have the original mean and standard deviation. But when we transform that one into standard normal distribution, we can now interpret this one because we have a table of probabilities for the z-scores and because of this we can now have a good interpretation based on the given data so standard normal distribution so we have this from a normal distribution we can standardize this or we can transform this one to the standard normal distribution so we have this formula okay the first one is if the given is based on the population and the second one is based on the given or date given data sample okay but for now we'll concentrate only on this part the population z scores and probability the standard score commonly referred to as a z score is a very useful statistic because it allows us to calculate the probability of a score occurring within our normal distribution. Of course, because we're talking about probability. So, first and foremost, we can calculate or find the probability. Letter B, it enables us to compare two scores that are from different normal distributions. This is because any normal distribution can be converted into the standard normal distribution now if you have two normal distribution say for example we have these two we cannot directly compare this one because the data sets are different the mean and the standard deviations of both normal distributions are different but when we convert them to the norm or standard normal distribution so they are only now based on a single uh, probability distribution or normal, normal distribution so now we can now compare these two normal distributions examples Raul has taken two tests in his chemistry class he scored 72 on the first test for which the mean of all scores was 65 and the standard deviation was 8 so let's have this first we have test the first test so we have the first test and the other one we have the second test okay so he scored what is his score 72 and the mean of this course is 65 and the standard deviation was 8 now in the second test he received a 60 so this part we have 60 with for which all the mean scores was 45 And the standard deviation was 12. 
In comparison to the other students, did Raul do better on the first test or the second test? So by just looking at this, maybe you can just infer by just looking at this. Some would say the first, some would say the second. But to make sure that we will answer this correctly, we can convert this two tests into z or the standard normal distribution so for this one our formula is z is equal to x minus the mean over standard deviation so we have 72 minus 65 over 8 so you can use your calculator 72 minus 65 divided by 8 point eight seven five so this is point eight seven five Okay, 0.875. Uh, just a reminder, when we talk about z-scores, you know, it should have two decimal places. So, two decimal places. So, we can round this off to 0.88. So, rounded off to 0.88. Now, let's have the second one. So, the same formula. So, we have 60 minus 45 over 12 so 60 minus 45 divided by 12 so it's 1.25 so by just looking at this on the first test it's 0 0.88 and for the second test it's 1.25 so if we draw the normal curve, so this is the normal curve since this, they are only on, uh, we have converted them to the standard normal curve so we can draw them on a one curve. So here is, let's say for example this is 0 0.88 and somewhere here is 1.25. So by just looking at this, Raul did better on the second test no? because it is farther away from the mean. So compared to his other classmates, he did better on the second test. Another example, the mean grade in the final examination in statistics was 85 and the standard deviation was 7. So we have the stat quiz or exam. So we have this. And the other one is in English, the mean grade was 89 and the standard deviation was 13. So the other subject is English. So let's start first with a given. The mean for the stat examination is 85. The standard deviation was 7. For the English, the mean is 89. The standard deviation is 13. Now, Lisa's grades in statistics and English were 90 and 94 respectively. So here, for statistics, her grade is 90. Here, for English, her grade is 94. So in which subject was her standing higher? So again, we cannot compare these two directly because they have different mean and standard deviation. So we can use the standard normal distribution. So we will convert this from x to z. So x minus the mean over the standard deviation. So this is 90 minus 85 over 7. So what is this equal to? 0.71. So rounded off to 0.71. 
On the other hand, for the English, we have 89. Ah, we have the x, 94 minus 89 over 13. So, point thirty-eight. So, point thirty-eight. So, which is greater, point thirty-eight or point seventy-one? Point seventy-one. So, this is greater. So, meaning, Lisa standing in statistics is higher than in English.